Hello, beloved. Hope you're doing well on this nice spring day. It's not often in North Carolina on the 18th of May that you can say it's a nice spring day where it's 50, low 50 when you walk out the door. I walked out this morning and I thought, well, this is nice. It feels like March. Um, but we are thankful for that. I personally have great hope that... Um, God, in his abundant grace and mercy, will grant me a rather cool summer um, because I am greatly desiring a cool summer. I just, I despise the heat, as you all know. So, uh, anyway, today is the 18th of May. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be the 18th of May? Well, some years, it doesn't mean a thing to be the 18th of May, but this year... The 18th of May means that it is Ascension Day, 39 days after the Easter Sunday. It is the day that we celebrate uh, Jesus ascending into the heavens. Uh, best account found in Acts chapter 1, where he goes out and he ascends. And uh, they're standing around looking at each other like, well, what do we do now? And the angel says, to them, why stand ye looking? See, King James comes in. Why stand ye looking here into the clouds? This same Jesus. I love that line. This same Jesus, who you see ascend, will likewise return in like manner. This same Jesus. You know, I think because we hear that that part of he will return in like manner, we think, well, we won't have to be on the lookout for Jesus because he's going to come in the clouds and we don't necessarily have to worry about seeing and trying to find him in real time. But I am amazed at the this same Jesus line because even if he comes in the clouds, I wonder if many today would recognize him. What do I mean by that? Well, very simply, this. I wonder if the Jesus that we know is the same one as represented in the Scriptures. Because I think sometimes we, A, hyper-spiritualize Jesus, not disputing his divinity at all, but we forget that Jesus is very human. Fully human, we understand, theologically. Likewise, I think we hyper-spiritualize a lot of what Jesus says, and we don't understand that Jesus came and is speaking in some instances about physical things, everyday things. So like when Jesus uh, speaks in, in Luke 4 and he says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing about he has come to set the captives free. We don't think about the fact that Jesus actually came to set the captives free. We say, oh, he came to free us from sin. No, beloved, it goes beyond that a little bit. Jesus came to free them from all sorts of things. Not just sin, mindsets, poverty, all sorts of things. Jesus came to speak to prevailing issues of the day and say, you are not treating each other right. You, you need to treat each other better. You need to be reminded that we are all created in the image of God and that we all deserve to be treated justly and with mercy. I've been looking ahead to um, a couple Sundays from now in the, the lectionary that Sunday in the Matthew passage it says I, I desire mercy. Jesus quoting back to the book of Hosea. And so this afternoon this same Jesus are you cognizant of him? Are you recognizing him the way you should? Are you studying him the way you should? 
you know, it's amazing to me that Jesus speaks in so many uh, environmental ways, and yet we don't have a well-articulated theology for the environment. Something I'm trying to come to terms with in my own life. Are you focused on the same things that Jesus was focused on in his day? I am working for on a uh, next week's Thursday devotion because it's going to be Memorial Day weekend and so I want to give summer reading list. You know, I, I like to do that. Share with you what I'm going to be reading, some of what I'm going to be reading this summer, Lord willing, and give you a few things to think about reading as well. One of the books that I would recommend right now, and I may have recommended it before, but on this particular subject, I would recommend is a wonderful book by Philip Yancey. It's about 20 some years old now, but it still has an abundant amount of truth. And it is titled this, The Jesus I Never Knew. Beloved, I encourage you to pick it up. I encourage you to pick up your own copy of the scriptures and delve into it. Read it through the eyes of the, peop the way the people heard it in that day. Because the issues are still the same. And we need to maybe remember that it's, we read it through middle class, uh, white eyes, and not the eyes of a carpenter, a Jewish carpenter, a poor Jewish carpenter in first century Palestine. we look at it through his eyes because this same Jesus is going to return it may change how we view some things and that's our calling because ultimately if this same Jesus is going to return and he tells us to follow in his steps as we've seen in First Peter and beyond that we are to model our lives like him then we need to get to know that Jesus a little bit better Maybe not a little bit, a whole lot. Because that Jesus was attractive to the people of his day. The people we're trying to reach. It may help us to look more like him. As we do, we walk in grace. And so I leave that thought with you. May you walk with grace today. And may it abound in your life. As we celebrate Ascension Day. And we try to look like this same Jesus. Until Sunday, we'll finish our look at 1 Peter. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care.